what a beautiful afternoon boys and girls and most of all welcome to the beginning of the school drive this is sydney pumulani mikosi and i am traveling with senzo who is my camera operator this afternoon we are going to try by all means and get you see quite a lot of interesting animals and we are hoping to hear quite a lot of questions from you you can ask your parents to write us questions on on net your kids at wild earth.tv there is where we'll be catering for both your questions and comments so here where we are we are looking for some big predators predators are the born to kill animals animals who normally go around here and look for other animals in order to survive. Those are the animals I'm looking for this afternoon. Specifically, I'm looking for the lions. I am now here in South Africa and now let's cross over to Kenya in Masai Mara, another African country, and meet David. A very good afternoon, boys and girls of night to your kids, and welcome to a different country called Kenya, and we're in a game reserve called Mara Triangle. And my name is David, and with me on camera is Bungay. Bungay, good afternoon, and we are very excited to have you on board today in this, on this lovely Saturday, and we've got all those buffaloes for you to start with, because Sydney said he is going to look for lions, and lions are known once in a while to hunt and eat these antelopes that you see here. These big antelopes that you see here are called buffaloes, or we call them the African buffaloes. How cool is that? Aren't you lucky? So, what are you going to do, boys and girls? We have requested you one thing, and I'm sure, I'm sure, Sidin told you, your questions are very important. If you have any nice comment, please send it through using not your kids at worldearth.tv email. If you send us emails with questions and with some comments, we are going to be very happy because we're going to be telling you a lot about Africa. And when you saw those buffaloes sitting down there, they're just sitting down there because it's a bit warm where we are. And it's 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you who like to work things in metric system, it is 29 degrees Celsius, and that is very warm for us. And that's why those buffaloes seem to be in one position and not doing much. Very good. Now, my plan today, just like Sydney, is to look for lions. You know, because all of us want to spoil you with lions, or maybe, if I'm lucky, I might look for a cheetah. Who knows what I'll see. Apart from Sydney and myself, there's another gentleman who would like to say hello to all of you kids. Indeed, we are also out in Juma. We are out and about on a also a very hot day, like David is having in the Maasai Mara. It is also hot on this side of the world too. My name is Tristan, as David mentioned. I've got David on camera this afternoon. And we're not looking for lions like the other two. We're looking for a different type of cat. We're looking for a leopard. And in particular, a leopard called Hukumuri. Now, Hukumuri is a leopard that is not seen as often as some of our others he's a he's a big male that dominates to the west of where we are and so he was seen on this termite mound this morning and so i thought i would come and have a little look and see if he's still around but it doesn't look like he's here looks like he might have moved off and i think he might have wandered off to a dam that's quite close by there's a bit of water there and he might have gone and had a bit of a drink so we're going to just kind of move around in this area we also just want to double check before we drive away if he's not lying in some of the shade Ultimately, the reason why he was here is because in this mound over here, you'll see that this entrance has got a lot of soil that's very disturbed. Now, that is an entrance for warthogs. This is where warthogs will live. They live in termite mounds in burrows. And often leopards, particularly big male leopards, they will hunt warthogs by sitting on top of the mound and waiting for warthogs to run out. Now, earlier today, we had him sitting on top of this, waiting for the warthogs. And it seems as though either he got impatient and decided to move on, or he managed to kill a warthog and eat it and move off, 
or he just kind of missed and the warthogs got away and then he decided to carry on as well. It's been a very, very hot day today and so I don't think he would have gone too far, but you never know with leopards. Leopards are funny animals. Sometimes they'll walk in the heat of the day, they'll move around, sometimes they just decide that they want to have a nap and they'll sleep, so you can never be too sure with where a leopard has gone. But what I want to do is just check the roads around this area. If we check the roads, he has to have crossed at some point or walked somewhere, and we should be able to then find his paw prints to be able to find him. So we're going to just double check for where he is. In the meantime, though, we're going to send you back to David in the Maasai Mara. I'm sure he's got beautiful views of the African landscape up there, and I hope that he's going to find his lions. Well, I decided to move on and forgot the buffaloes because what we need to do is to get some lions that are quite a distance from where we are. So we need to keep going and make sure I get lions for you. Does that sound good? And remember what I told you earlier, boys and girls, for any questions or any comments you may have, you may send them through on email, request your parents to do that or your guardians not your kids at worldearth.tv there's one big difference between there's one big difference between the Mara Triangle and Juma and we are talking in terms of vegetation in the Mara Triangle it's more open as it is and if you go to Juma where Sydney and Tristan are there are a lot of thickets there so it's quite different that, that area and where we are the big habitat here is what we call the savanna, and savanna is the open grassland like this. And one big lack we have here, unlike Juma, we can see animals from a long, long distance. Not sure if Bungay could be able to spot some elephants. They're quite far, but Bungay, my camera operator, sometimes is magic. He can try and pan. It's a long way, but I'm seeing some elephants that I think we can quickly have a look and see whether you can see them or not, but I'm sure you're gonna see others and maybe much closer. How does that feel, boys and girls, having seen buffaloes before? Excellent. They are a long way from where we are, but we got some wonderful and very strong cameras. So what would happen is, because it's quite warm, so those elephants are just feeding and feeding and if you look at their ears, they're flapping their ears because it is quite warm. And it, when it cools off, they're not going to flap their ears as much. Isn't that wonderful, boys and girls? So keep watching. And sometimes you'll get other animals in those bushes. They could be either some cats of some sort. And leopards love to be in such trees. You see this small little baby elephant there? How lovely is that? So you see the bit shimmering because it's warm, as I said earlier. And that's why they're near the bush there. Dina, you see what a beautiful view. Very true. It is so beautiful, Dina, that you look at the grass in the foreground and the elephants there and the trees and in the background there's an escarpment that is so beautiful and that escarpment is called the Olololo. So Dina, on top of that escarpment, that is where we live. Will you believe it? And that's the best place for us to live in. There's a camp at the very top there and that's where our camp is. And there's another lodge there that's called Angama Lodge. And boys and girls, I got some surprise for you because Tristan have the biggest surprise for you on this new year. Indeed we have. We haven't just found the big storm that is starting to come in. We found exactly what we were looking for. So there's our spotty leopard. He's having a very good nap. He wasn't where we left him this morning. We had to kind of follow his footprints a little bit. They luckily walked along the road for quite a long way and then we managed to spot him sleeping under this little bush. And you can see he's very, very tired and he's probably hot. It's a warm day here in South Africa and if you're covered in fur, 
it's not very nice it gets, makes it very difficult to be able to kind of cool down and so you'll find that his belly is moving quite a lot do you see that he's kind of breathing quite quickly and so cats when they are very very hot their rate of breathing increases quite dramatically and so it goes a lot faster and the reason for that is that is how they cool themselves down they have an ability basically when they breathe quite quickly particularly if their mouth is open they have saliva or, or the moisture in their mouth and as they breathe that hot air it causes evaporation now evaporation is when a liquid turns into a gas and that causes cooling and it cools the blood that's actually in the tongue and the mouth and sends the cooler blood back to the body and so it acts a little bit like a radiator of a car it just keeps these bodies in the these cats internal temperatures down and so that's why he's breathing quite fast and what we will find with him is that he's going to sleep like this and he's going to sit and he's going to probably rest for a little bit but as this cloud cover of the storm is starting to come over so it's cooling down quite a bit it's already much cooler than when we started out and that might mean that he's going to get up and start moving he does look quite hungry and so maybe he's going to go look for some food now the good news hot spots yes indeed i think he's probably quite thankful for the fact that there isn't as much sunshine as what there was about half an hour ago half an hour ago it was seriously warm the sun was searing us and it felt like we were being burnt and now this cloud cover has come over and if we start to hear little bits of rumbling of thunder and things like that it's always good for a leopard because a leopard knows that if rain is around and there's darkness and noise of rain it's always easier for them to hunt Sharon no he wouldn't have been sawing now or during the course of today um, leopards typically saw around sort of sunrise sunset and then through the night as they are marking territory and remember this morning when we saw him he was hunting he wasn't marking territory and so he won't saw when he hunts because otherwise that advertises his presence and it makes it very very kind of easy for the prey animals to know that he's there and that's not going to work very well unfortunately for him it's going to make life you know very difficult to find food and so he'll keep quiet and he'll kind of keep his his sound to himself and he'll sneak around while he's hunting i wouldn't be surprised though that tonight we hear him sawing um, when he wakes up when he decides that he's going to start going on his kind of evening movement that he will start to saw around sort of sunset that's typically when we see these guys doing it and I have to laugh at this cat where he's, you can see he's kind of lying down now and doesn't really care too much about us at all but when we first found him he was trying to hide so he had his head up but he was kind of tucked down with his ears flat and he was trying to hide behind that little bit of grass that is there but unfortunately his body is too big and his tail was sticking up and so we swatted him quite easily in the end but he's a beautiful beautiful cat and we haven't seen him for quite some time well I haven't seen him for quite some time the last time I saw him was in April of 2018 so I mean it's it's good nine months ago um, and he's been hanging around mostly further west away from our traverse area and that means that it's been very tricky to kind of find him and so I'm really glad that he's come back he's a he's a good looking fella and he's got beautiful eyes and so I'm hoping that he'll spend a good afternoon with us and yes Emma he is having good dreams I'm pretty sure He's thoroughly enjoying having a nice nap. He was a busy boy last night because where he came from um, last night was very far to the west. He must have walked easily, I would say, 15 or 10 to 15 miles last night to get to this point. And so that coupled with a hot day um, means that he's going to be very, very sleepy and, and dreamy. And I would, as Emma was saying to me in my ear, he's probably dreaming of a little bacon sandwich, a warthog bacon sandwich is probably what he would like. And maybe later this evening he might get lucky at some point. But for now, he's just going to rest and take it easy. Good, we're going to sit with him for the remainder of the afternoon because I'm sure he is going to wake up as it gets a bit cooler. In the meantime, though, I'm going to send you across to Sydney, who seems to have had a bit of success, success of his own. I am now using one of the methods in order to find animals, which is called trekking. Trekking is part of trek and science. Here, I am looking for all the signs on the ground to see who was here before me. Normally, the, this is how I find animals in the bush. The lions I'm looking for, if I pick up their tracks here, I am going to keep following their tracks until we find an animal. So far, it's very much difficult to see the tracks because of the time of the day. <laughs> Chuck, the lion tracks 
they are easy to identify, but lions themselves are very much difficult to find. Because here on the ground, you will see the tracks, and I've got to judge how old is the track, and I must also check the direction of the tracks. Sometimes these lions, when they are walking around here, they walk in between the bushes and come back to the road. So when they are going in the bushes, is when it becomes difficult for me to see. But by this time of the day, trekking is not easy, it's quite very much difficult, because when the sun is bright, it's not easy to see the tracks. <laughs> that is quite a very lovely question. Is it easier to trek when it's dry or is it easier to trek when it's wet? When it's dry, it must have to be dry, but the ground still has to have soil particles which are fine so that when the animal is walking, it can develop the sign on the ground. If it's dry and the soil is washed away, it's difficult because then I cannot be able to see the markings. When it's wet, it's easy to identify the tracks, but it's difficult to track an animal. Why? Because of the following. You are going to be confused because the moisturized part of the soil, where the animal has gone past, it stays much longer. The track for this morning on a wet area is still going to look fresh until now. And tomorrow morning, if that area is still fresh, uh, you are still going to see it as if the animal has just gone past now. So that is what the wet area brings as a confusion during the trekking activities. Gary, despite the size, if you look at the track itself, you will see that the tracks have got some kind of lobes. And these lobes, the drawings of the lobes on the ground for a leopard, they are different from the lions. Arrangement of the toes, the leopard toes are much more round. And the lion tropes, you will see, some are much more oval. And yes, despite the size, those are the things helping me in order to identify between the two. And they even got similarities. There's similarities on these tracks and there's differences. I will be very much happy to show you the similarities if I find any of those tracks here on the ground so that we can easily see that. So I'm just trying to check here on the ground and so far I am not seeing anything. But if I see any of these tracks, I can promise you we are going to be, we are going to discuss all these other things while we are seeing the track itself. Yeah, lions are very much interesting animals and I can promise you I don't get bored of seeing the lions every day. <laughs> they are just beautiful and they don't do the same thing every day. Today they will be drinking, tomorrow they are sleeping, after that they are walking. You know, it's always interesting. So now let's uh, quickly cross over to Tristan with a beautiful cat. Well, good luck, Sydney. Hopefully you'll be able to find those lions and track them down and, and be able to see them. We, we saw them this morning and I'm hoping that they haven't moved too far. Much like this leopard, it's because it's been hot. The big cats don't like to move very much in the heat. It's, it's just one of those things, there, especially at this time of the year. They tend to find a little bit of shade and then they lie down and they rest and they wait until the afternoon. But the good news is that there is some thunder in the distance and so that kind of triggering of thunder and, and this cloud cover that is coming over is going to be good for our cats to be a little bit more active. You see that bright blue sky? That was over us the whole part of the day and the sun was really very bright but as soon as you get rain coming in like that 
it should trigger a little bit of movement there's also a bit of a breeze that's starting to pick up now which is good the, the wind will be a little bit cooler and that will kind of trigger the animals to start waking up a little bit earlier than they probably would have had the sun stayed out for much longer so I'm glad that it's also shady because otherwise we would be in the sun and we'd be getting absolutely baked by now which would have not been very pleasant. David and I were saying this morning that we were going to get, or this afternoon, that we were going to get abused by the sun but luckily all is okay and we put our sun cream on and then now the clouds have come so it's a bit avoided crisis. So Jeff, is Hosanna safe? with Hukumuri around. So those of you that don't know who all these kind of leopards are, so Jeff, um, the the thing is is that Hosanna is, well he's a young male leopard essentially that is still growing and still finding his feet as an adult individual. So he's only kind of approaching sort of three years old now. Um, whereas Hukumuri is a much older male, he's traveled a long distance and is far more experienced. So. The, the problem with Hosanna that he has is that Hukumuri is a lot more sort of street, has a lot more street smarts or is a lot kind of more experienced with dealing with other leopards and that's where Hosanna isn't and so Hosanna has had a very different upbringing because his kind of father figure in terms of Tingana which is the dominant male leopard he hasn't really kind of chased Hosanna away and has kind of treated him with quite a bit of respect whereas Hukumuri wouldn't really be like that. He's obviously going to be a little bit more aggressive and we have seen Hosanna and Hukumuri kind of interact before and see one another and it's always led to Hukumuri chasing Hosanna and Hosanna running away and kind of leaving the area. So there is an element of risk there but as time is going on Hosanna is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and he's starting to really kind of get to a very similar size to what Hukumuri is. Now whether that's a good thing I'm not quite sure and I'll tell you why because when he gets bigger he's going to start to feel more confident and Hukumuri is going to start seeing him as more and more of a threat rather than just a young male that he can chase and then leave him alone. If he thinks Hosanna is really competition they might actually try and kind of he will he might try and kind of fight with Hosanna and that's not going to be ideal so there's always an element of risk when Hukumuri is around. The thing is we don't even know where Hosanna is at the moment we haven't seen Hosanna in the last four days um, and we're not sure which way he's kind of gone we think that he's still somewhere around kind of the central parts of Juma which is quite far from where we are now and I think he's on a kill somewhere because if you haven't seen him in four days kind of moving around then he's got to have got, gotten himself a meal and so you know he, the distance at the moment is quite far but it's going to be interesting to see where Hukumuri moves during the course of the night particularly because Tingana, the dominant male, is also in the area at the moment. He's also kind of in the central part of Juma. And no doubt both of these leopards are going to make a noise at some point to, during the night. And that's going to attract the attention of one another. And it's going to be then interesting to see who moves where. And the chess game will begin this evening when it comes to the two big dominant males. And then obviously Hosanna in amongst them. Are you dreaming, boy? You can see he's kind of moving his head a little bit. Often these cats, when they're having a really good nap, sometimes get a bit kind of into a deep sleep and they start to dream a little bit and you see paws twitching and moving and even their heads that will kind of move a little bit as well so it seems like he's having a good dream and Emma who's the director in my ear that gives me all the questions she's saying to me that he's dreaming about eating his sandwich well his way he was moving his head it seems like he was indeed dreaming like that but still a very sleepy cat at this stage I think he's going to wait for it to get a little cooler before he decides to actually move and decides to kind of go anywhere good we'll sit here like i say we'll be patient i'm sure he is going to lift his head at some point and we can see his beautiful eyes in the meantime back to sydney to see how he's progressing with his tracking I am still in the middle of trekking here and I've just realized that I've got my trekking book with and the question you asked about the difference between the leopard as well as the lion track here we are going to do it much easier. So if you look here this is a leopard. This is a lion and this is a leopard. So let's look at the arrangement of these tracks. Can you see that this is much more round and this is more like oval so this is how you can distinguish this is the leopard and this is the lion <laughs> you can see that the toes of the leopard are much more round and beautiful on the ground 
more than the lions. You see, the lions on the ground, the trek is, doesn't look beautiful as the leopard. Look at this leopard. This is quite a beautiful trek. And if you look here on the edges, you can see that the lobes of the leopards, <laughs> the, the lobes of the leopards here, they are much more uh, clear. And the lobes of the lions, here you can't see that is clear. But on the ground, they can also be very clear if there is deep sand. If there is deep soil particles, uh, you will see that uh, this is much clearer. So it also depends on the surface where the animals are walking. That will determine the sign on the ground. But now you can see the toes are all completely different. This one, some of them look like bananas. So I've got a banana here. Let, let me show you why I'm saying this has got bananas. Uh, if, if you look at this uh, a banana, you look at the shape of the banana, you can see that some of these toes here, they look like a banana shape. You see? <laughs> so here is much more round. So now uh, we are going to carry on and see if we can uh, find something interesting again. Now let's uh, quickly cross over the Masai Mara where David has got some elephants. I'm not sure what Sidney is showing you, boys and girls. I do not know what he's doing there, but uh, I think it's better for you to watch elephants. What do you think? We saw elephants earlier, which were quite a distance, and I have found another group, and a group of elephants is called a herd, and it is much closer to the road than the first ones we saw, albeit they looking in a different direction, and you can see they are giving us not their faces, which I'd be happy if it could be possible for them to turn their head, heads around. But animals being animals, wild animals are wild animals, they'll always do what they want. Now, if you look at them carefully, they all seem to have tusks. I'm sure you have heard of some uh, part of the world called Asia. Now, the elephants in Asia are a bit different from the elephants that we got here in Africa, because those ones in Asia, the females or the girls, do not have the tusks. But this one's, or this one's in Africa, both males and females got tusks. As much as you see that one particular one does not have tusks. Once in a while, that could happen, and that is not very normal. And either it was born without tusks, or maybe she lost them as she was growing. But ideally, both boys and girls, or both males and females of the African elephants got those white tusks. Now, they use those tusks for so many reasons. If they want to dig something on the ground, that's what they use. And if they want to break a tree or bring some branches down, they use the same tusks. So sometimes if you look at those tusks carefully, you'll see they're a bit worn out because they keep rubbing them, they keep wearing them. And those tusks are modified teeth. Like all of you, I'm sure you can touch your teeth in the front or what you call incisors. So those teeth are like incisors. They're modified teeth for the elephants and they use them either to dig. Sometimes the males will use them to fight, which is not a good thing, but in general the females do not use the tusks to fight. Now elephants are herbivores and herbivores mean elephants eat anything green from grass, leaves, twigs, branches, Sometimes they dig some roots, some tubers under the ground. That's all what they eat. Now, boys, remember, and girls, we had a plan when we started that you'll be sending us questions. Britannia, you are saying, why do some animals go extinct? There will only be one reason. If an animal, for example, does not have a home, what you would call a habitat, a habitat is where an animal lives, eats, drinks, and sleeps there. There's a possibility an animal would go extinct because it doesn't have a home. And more often than not, it's we human beings that will do that. So we take their habitat or we take their land. And of course, if an animal doesn't have something to eat or to drink or a place to live, then ideally 
that animal goes extinct. So that's how some animals disappear. I'm sure you have heard someone saying as dead as a dodo. So dodos were types of birds that used to be there and not there anymore. So that would happen. Or if those animals would get an infection and the whole species or the whole type of those animals would die or birds without maybe either of them recovering to be able to reproduce. If they do not, or if they're not able to have more babies, then unfortunately all those animals will become extinct. Now we've got another elephant here that also doesn't have tusks. So once in a while you see one or two without tusks, but in general they should have both boys and girls, or both males and females. Remember, as we said, questions, comments, not your kids at worldearth.tv, emails, request your parents or guardians to keep us sending us those questions. We are very happy when we interact with kids, especially on a directed Saturday, and see how beautiful the Mara Triangle looks like in Kenya. I was telling you earlier the difference between the Mara and Juma. The area here is so huge, and we can see the alleys from sometimes even three kilometers away because I'm sure you know they are the largest animals that we got in the world. I'm saying largest animal that live on land because I'm sure you know when you go to the ocean or to the sea we got other animals like whales which are big but on land these are the largest animals and they always go in groups and you remember to do a group of elephants is called a herd and more often than not you'll see cows or what you call females or the girls with the young ones. The boys in general do not live with the girls. They are always away. Very good. Now, boys and girls, I think I'll take you back to South Africa because I need to move and maybe look for something better and good than the elephants here because Hosanna, uh, or Tristan rather, have Hosanna and maybe something else. Indeed, we are still with Hukumuri, and I was hoping that he would be a little bit more active like David's elephants and maybe start moving his bottom, but at this stage his bottom is as still as ever. Even his tail has not twitched or moved since we have been here. He is in full-on sleep mode, but you might hear the thunder rumbling in the background. Hopefully he's going to hear that too, and it's going to trigger him to start moving and to start thinking about going to find something to eat and it will actually get him kind of getting up and going. Now I was going to show you a very beautiful bird just now but it flew away unfortunately which is very very bad. I was hoping it was going to stay. It was making a nice call and was sitting very nicely out in the open and as birds do they tend to fly away very quickly. Whenever they get a camera on them they like, it's like they know. It's, they like little samurais. Lisa, yes, very easy to tell the difference between leopards and cheetahs. So basically with a leopard, if you have a look at this animal, it's got a very big strong set of um, front legs with big shoulders, big heavy thick neck and it's got on its body what's called rosettes. Now rosettes are spots that have almost looked like they've exploded with a little caramel center. They almost look, remind me a little bit of popcorn except black popcorn basically and so they are, they even though they're called spotted they actually have what's called rosettes they also see now on his neck he's got a kind of line that runs on his neck there or spots that all come together that's known as a bib which you don't very often see on a cheetah at all and these guys like I say are much more powerfully built bigger stronger animals than what you, you see or heavier stronger should I say than what you see from a cheetah a cheetah can actually be a much taller creature and a much longer creature are you gonna roll over for us Oh, he's stretching. It's a good sign. When he starts to stretch and yawn, this might mean that he's going to start thinking about waking up and starting to move. Right. Now, on the cheetah, on the other hand, well, it is built for speed, and it doesn't look like that at all. It's got a very different kind of way about it. It has very big spots on it, and I'm going to try and get you a picture so I can show you what a cheetah looks like. If you just give me two seconds. So, here we go. I found one already, David. Let's use, I'm just trying to think what's going to be a good one. All right, that's a good one to use. So there is a cheetah. Um, now you can see with the cheetah, unlike the leopard, it's got solid spots. 
So it's got these kind of big solid spots on it and then you see on its face it's got these kind of tear marks. These little black tear marks, very small round head, long long legs and a much longer tail that's kind of flatter at the end. Now a leopard's tail is not as long as that and it doesn't have that kind of flattened appearance and the reason why a cheetah's tail is much more flattened is because it acts like a little rudder. Cheetah run very very fast and so they use that tail just to balance them and allow them to be able to kind of stay upright when they're running at such crazy speeds and chasing um, these animals that turn very fast and so that's why a cheetah will have that tail and and obviously the long legs and then the the very much more slender build or thin build is to be able to then kind of keep the speed up and to be able to catch things so very very different animals they live in different areas because of their kind of way that they go about hunting so even though they both occur in in this particular park you'll find the cheetahs like to hang around in more open sections where they can use their speed whereas you'll find these guys like thicker denser areas where they can use their camouflage and their power to surprise an animal and grab it and then wrestle it down to the ground so very different kind of ways that they go about it and so very easy to tell the difference between the two it often people do get confused but the spots are the very easy way Kelsex, thank you. You say what a lovely picture reference. Yes, I quite like that picture. It was taken recently when I was in Kenya. Um it was of Kenya actually, the cheetah. Um and it uh it was running in a rainstorm. It was a very cool picture. I'll actually I'll post it at some point um on my on my Twitter or something, I don't know, and you guys can actually see it properly. But it's nice I, I like that picture as well. It's a very cool picture. Poor Kikenia was trying to run away from the rain and so maybe we might see that <coughs> with Hukumuri today as he tries to maybe get away from the rain at some point the cats don't like the rain at all they'll often find that they'll kind of just try and trot and try and get into a bit of cover if the rain really starts to come down now talking about rain I actually just felt a drop did you feel a drop David David I felt a drop which is not good news now it's not a big drop but it is a drop and water is not really our friend when we have <laughs> when we don't have our rain roof on and so and hopefully it's going to go away and not rain on us now Emma is asking if we're sure something didn't pee on us well Emma I'm quite sure given that above me is no tree whatsoever and I don't see any birds kind of flying over and also birds don't pee they um, they defecate and pee in the same thing and so it's a big kind of blodge of, of paste that hits you rather than liquid so so it is not a bird that is, has deposited some sort of moisture on my hand it is unfortunately it is h2o which is water out of a cloud that is going to kind of hit me but it's not a lot at the moment it's just a little kind of drop i think it's just on the fringe we're right on the edge of the storm i think it's going to hopefully move across towards the sort of western side of this area but you can hear a little thunder rolling in the distance and so while we kind of figure out whether or not we're going to get some rain and thunder and lightning let's send you back across to David in the Mara and see what he's managed to find now. Guys, I told you things will start going from good to better and maybe at one point they'll be best by the time we finish the show and we've got now the tallest animal in the world. We had the largest animal on land, the elephant a few minutes ago, but now we have found ourselves the tallest animal in the world and that is a giraffe. And see how majestic he is, and I'm saying that he, because of his size, in general you get males being a lot bigger in size than females, and that's why I'm saying he is a boy. And once in a while you'll see them walking on their own, but girls will always be in company of other girls or with youngsters with themselves. Now, giraffes, just like the elephants, are also herbivores. But there's something very unique about giraffes. Because as much as they are herbivores, they are very selective on what they eat. They just don't eat like grass and leaves and twigs, you know, just like the elephants. Giraffes always tend to prefer leaves only. So giraffes, we call them browsers because when you browse you're always eating on top of the leaves and that's why you can see him eating on top of that bush then he'll eat and then stop and look around just to make sure he is safe and there's nobody coming who is coming towards him I'm talking of maybe lions 
and yes that's very beautiful giraffe wonderful light around him what do you think boys and girls and in the background there and in the background there, if you look carefully the animals way back there which looks like zebras to me and there are other animals that will hunt giraffes for example like lions but in general they prefer to hunt the young giraffes not the fully grown ones but if you get a big group of say lions what you call a pride of say maybe 10 or 15 they are capable of hunting a fully grown giraffe these are the tallest animals as I said earlier and also the males are much taller than the females some of the giraffes or some of the males are almost six meters in in height 17 18 feet but the girls are slightly bit shorter about 15 feet in height or on height and they've got the longest necks of all the animals that you'd think of is that beautiful to see a tall animal? I'm sure most of you kids could walk just under that giraffe and there's a car that just passed there and I'm sure they must have seen the giraffe or missed it but I wouldn't imagine anybody would miss such a big and beautiful animal like the giraffe. So this particular type of giraffe is called the Maasai giraffe and what would happen is Giraffes may hide if they feel concerned, but now if you noticed or when I was talking about earlier He would be eating and then stop and look but should he feel a bit uncomfortable He is going to move to the thickets where he can blend in the big trees and hide you see what he's doing now He eats he stops and he walks away, but as he is walking He's also looking to make sure he is safe and nobody is following him because he could be hunted by either lions or sometimes hyenas. You see how he is looking? It's just to make sure that there is no predator. Predators are animals that eat other animals. The lion heart, what's the lifespan of the giraffe? Uh, give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to check the lifespan of a giraffe because I have it on my notes. We shall have lots of this animal somewhere. And I'll be telling about the speed. When giraffes run, they're very fast animals. And you can see them doing about 60 kilometers per hour when they run. And should be about 18 years. Um, let me just try and remember about 18 years. But I just want to confirm to you 100% and tell you from the notes I made when I was in school we have giraffes to look at, other antelopes to look at, lions to look at so I'm gonna let you know what is the average lifespan of a giraffe because I'm sure I have it somewhere we'll always keep notes when you go to school and I have the giraffes here and what's the giraffe saying? I'm guessing first 18 but let's be 100% sure without making any mistakes all right where is the giraffe the giraffe i said 18 and from what i see here it is saying what's the guest station period slot name and age independence so what's the last one i still cannot see it here i'm sure it's somewhere gonna get it in a minute okay age of independence it'll give it 25 years that's what it's saying so i was less by seven giraffes will live for about 25 years well that's not a bad life to live 25 years and as I was telling you before we got different types of giraffes um, in Africa we got this that's called the Maasai giraffe and the major difference between all those four types of giraffes or species of giraffe is just the body pattern everything else longevity uh, gestation period what they eat how they behave it basically remains the same it just those body patterns are different one of the most uh, beautiful ones to see is called the reticulated giraffe that looks like a fishing net which you see north of the country hello giraffe what do you see there very good well, as you remember, boys and girls, I promised you be looking for lions because I need to get them. I'll take you back to my friend Sydney in South Africa and he'll let us know what is his latest in his world.
So these lions, I have picked up some shreks here and it looks like they are deep in this block here and this is the area where I am hoping to find them at any time from now. The weather at the moment is nice and cool and when the weather is nice and cool like this, the animals such as lions, they start to move around. But when the sun is hot, is when they relax for long hours. The animals I'm looking for, lions, can sleep up to 18 hours a day. So I have to look, I have to be very careful and look everywhere here under these bushes. Maybe we are going to be lucky somewhere here. No sign here as uh, we are now in the middle of the bush where the animals can easily walk in between these grasses here. So not easy to see their tracks. Yeah, I cannot see any anything yet, but that does not mean these lions are not around here. It doesn't mean that because they can hide nicely. Maybe they woke up to go somewhere around here for some water. Yeah, we are very, very much close at the moment as I can also pick up some of the scent marks. I'm not sure if these scent marks were left behind by these lions or any other animals. So animals, when they're staying in the bush here, they always use the scent in order to mark, in order to advertise their presence in the area. So I have picked up a sign. Lisa and James, the precautions we take before we go out on a safari is that one, we have to remain seated at all times. Two, we are not allowed to use the flashlights against these animals, as some of them, like the elephants, can be very aggressive. Another one, we are not allowed to run in the bush. So if this vehicle have a puncture now, while I'm out, I've got to get off the car and fix it. I don't have to jump off the car and run away and try to go back because the tire is flat. So those are some of the precautions. And also, we have to dress, we have to dress something which is camouflaged so that it can match the surrounding while we are out here. If you look at the car, my, the color of my car, you can see that it's much more, it's green, and this green color don't disturb the animals and another thing is we don't have to make noise and we have to keep a long distance we have to keep a distance when approaching these animals we also have to consider wind direction if we are doing something on foot like a guided walk we have to first check the wind and make sure that we are going uh, not letting the animals knowing about our presence from the sense of smell. The purpose of these game drives and the guided walks is not to disturb the animals. It is to come and enjoy the animals and leave before the animals got dis disturbed. <laughs> uh, Kathy, uh, my banana is hidden deep in the bag and yes some of the animals they've got good sense of smell i cannot dispute that animals uh, can smell some of the fruits uh, while in the vehicles they can do that so that is why i've got to make sure that they're in the bag
And if I eat the banana, I must have to also put the, the, the banana skin in the bag. Because if I throw it on the ground, it's when animals are going to eat it and start to get used to it. Every time they pick it, they pick the sand, they will come to my vehicle and wanting the bananas. <laughs> So now let's uh, quickly uh, go back to Tristan. Well, it's important to have uh, snack safety, as you say, Sydney. No one wants to um, leave any snacks lying around for unsuspecting animals to get hold of. And funny enough, actually, talking about snacks, it's uh, really there's not many animals out here that you have to really worry about when it comes to snacks. The only thing that sometimes could be a bit tricky is if you had oranges with elephants. Elephants love an orange for some reason and they go into the farms on the edges of some of the nature reserves and cause lots of trouble, particularly with oranges. But uh, it, you'd have to have quite a few of them and you'd have to have quite a hungry elephant in order to have an issue with oranges. But otherwise most things are okay. Um, we've had many, many different kind of fruits and things. David, who's on camera today is the king of snacks and has always got a little assortment of nuts and fruits and all kinds of things and we haven't had an issue yet now Emma in final control no they don't get stuck up their nose so what happens is with an elephant is that it has a kind of divide down the center of the trunk which means that you can't really get big things inside there so an orange is perfect just to pick it up like this and then shove it in your mouth and just eat it all um, in one foul sweep so they kind of just do that and they'll eat many, many oranges all at once. And there's been quite a few entertaining stories about elephants and oranges. But for the most part, you're okay out here as long as you don't throw anything out of the vehicle. And as um, Sydney says, you have to have good snack manners. And snack manners means that nothing exits the vehicle until you get home and there's a dustbin. And then you can put everything away like apple cores and banana skins and those kind of things. And it's important to have a healthy diet out here. In fact, actually, David, where's your little snack box? Here we go. David's little snack box. It's a little empty because he's been snacking while we've been sitting and hooking where he's been sleeping. But here's David's little snack box. He's repurposed a little strawberry container. And let's see what's actually inside David's mm. snack box. David, what have you got in here? Let's see. David has got one times green apple. <laughs> that is inside there there is a nectarine that is inside there mm, and delicious you say david mm. yes delicious there is an almond i hope you don't mind i'm picking up all your fruit <laughs> david there's an I almond i have to eat that one and then there's even a cashew which i won't take because <laughs> There's only one cashew there, and I don't want to take that one for David. But that's David's little snack box, and quite convenient because it even has little things that you can close it oh, yeah. and you can put it together <laughs> like this. And so I wonder if you know Hukamori would like a little snack box, particularly of the animal that David has managed to now find up in uh, the Masai Mara. They are small, and I'm pretty sure he would love them in a little snack box. Well, boys and girls, I told you things were getting better and better and better because now. We have the largest bird that we got, almost, I think, in the whole world, called an ostrich. But above all, she got some chicks with her. Just look below her and see who is running up and down, left and right. And those are ostrich chicks. Yay! How nice! Just look at them, just weaving through the grass there. How amazing is this? I think this is one of my happiest days one of my happiest Saturdays and as we're beginning the year I'm going to think I'll be very lucky for the rest of the year just to see ostrich chicks. I'm trying to count how many they are. I have counted up to nine and Bungay who is on camera with me is still trying to count. He thinks nine could be nine could be the actual number but he thinks there were two that were hiding. So this one is called an ostrich and to let you know this particular bird does not fly. They got feathers, they got wings, but they're just too heavy to fly. And yes, I mean, the final control says they're very cute because we rarely see ostrich chicks. I can't remember the last time I saw them. So you boys and girls are very lucky to see ostrich chicks just running through the grass there. I'm still holding the figure nine or number nine chicks and the ostriches, I'll tell you boys and girls, when you see fully grown, fully grown ones, the females are that color that you see there, grayish, brownish in color, okay? But the males or the boys are black and white in color, a slightly bit larger in size. But you see the chicks just following the mother. 
So ostriches will always eat. Are you going towards an elephant? Boys and girls, this is becoming very exciting. Therefore, you are talking about a state of rivalry. I am not sure it's among the ostriches. And what would happen here is ostriches will always eat flowers, they'll eat seeds on the grass, and sometimes you'll see them eating sand or pebbles to help them in digestion. So that's exactly what I guess they're looking for here. And they're eating seeds from the grass, they're eating some leaves, they're eating some flowers that they can pick on the way as they keep moving. Just see, they're not even bothered by the elephants. So elephants on one side and ostrich chicks on the other side. How cute is that? This is so lovely to see this on a Saturday. I didn't expect to see an ostrich because my plants have been to try and get you some lions. So this mother is going to raise all these chicks on her own, but sometimes we'll see the male coming to help her to raise the chicks. Keshek and M, and you know, you're saying in the final control you have never seen this. I'm saying, you know, the best thing to do when you can, when you come to Kenya next time, we'll, you know, show you these uh, chicks first hand. But I'm very happy, you know, your ear has begun very well with chicks. And Bungay tells me, I think we got 11 chicks or almost a whole dozen of these ostrich chicks. So one major difference again because of availability of food and maybe the expanse of the Mara Triangle makes it easier for us to have ostriches here and to see them easily because in such an open area you can spot them from a distance. I'm trying to estimate how far they are from where we are. It could be close to about a kilometer but because of a wonderful camera you know we are able to catch them up and this becomes pretty exciting to see them just walking in the grass there and the mother is training the chicks what to do, how to, what to feed on. One of the major challenges of ostriches here in Africa are lions. Lions apparently will hunt ostriches. Can you believe that, boys and girls? Because ostriches got very big drumsticks. Can you see the drumsticks there? And they're not covered by any feathers. So the, ost the lions know it's easy to get the meat from the ostriches. And unfortunately, you know, M says no, but that's exactly how it is here. If you'd come here a few months ago, boys and girls, this area was filled by so many antelopes that we call wildebeest and zebras. Now, all of them have gone to another country called Tanzania, south of Kenya. Now, lions will hunt anything. Ostriches, baby, uh, you know, baby buffaloes and baby giraffes. And I hear, or oh, I'll let you know, that there's a leopard in South Africa and leopards also once in a while they'll always come and sneak on these ostrich chicks. Indeed, I would imagine that Hukumuri would love a little ostrich as a snack. It would be like going and getting a bucket of KFC I think for him and given that his name has um, chicken in it, a huku, so Hukumuri means um, chicken um, Basically, huku means chicken, and so maybe that's why he would like an ostrich. I don't know. Either way, he's going vegetarian at the moment. He's busy kind of eating little bits of grass um, that are down on the ground. They do do this quite regularly, so you'll find big predators like lion and leopard um, will actually try and kind of feed off grass every now and then it just helps to clean out their digestive system a little bit gets makes them often get rid of things that they're battling to digest so things like hair and bone but you can see he's up and moving and his tummy is quite thin so he is looking as though he does need a good meal and he's going to go to the toilet and do a little bit of a scent mark so that's him marking his territory showing everybody I am the dominant male in this area so we're gonna have to try and keep up with him it's gonna be very tricky where he's going he's going into a horrible horrible spot but luckily I know a little shortcut through here so we should be okay to keep up with him which will be good but he is going to head into a really tricky area so we'll try and just kind of see him for the last little bit because unfortunately it's getting to that time of the day where we're going to have to say goodbye to all of you that have joined us for our kids show today but we still hopefully get a view of our leopard for a little bit longer 
before that happens. Now you can see he's stopped all of a sudden. I wonder if he hasn't spotted something that he maybe is interested in eating. He's got his nose to the ground and kind of sniffing along. And often they will actually sniff out prey items, particularly things like Diker and Steenbok. Um, that are territorial in areas so I wonder what kind of food he's basically looking for anyway like I said unfortunately it is that time though of the day where we need to say goodbye to all of you that have joined us for the kids show I hope that you had a wonderful Saturday afternoon with us here in Africa and I hope that we will see you again next week at the same time in the same place and we'll see if Hukumuri maybe found a meal until then goodbye from us all